Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. If you've seen my MCM October 2014 vlog that I put up about a week ago, you'll know that I cosplayed Marty McFly at the event, along with Mr. Fusion. In fact, it was more supporting inaccurate clothing for Mr. Fusion, which I carried around with me, and quite a few people were interested in how I made it. This is 3D printed from the coffee grinder down. There's a three-part series in my YouTube channel. Well, this is part four. So it struck me as I was partying in the evening that it'd be rather good if something happened when you open the lid, like playing some music from Back to the Future, like The Power of Love. So today I'm going to put sounds into Mr. Fusion using an Adafruit soundboard. So let's see what we've got. So here it is. It comes in a little bag. Here are my hands for scale. This thing really is quite small. Um, it's Prolot 2133. The link is in the description. So um, it's a very tiny board with lots of connections on. It comes with two bits of pin strips so that you can solder them into the holes and plug it onto a breadboard. This is an extremely simple um, sound playing board. So basically we've got power along the top here and we've also got a micro USB socket which you can power it from. And you can put sounds on this. When you plug it in with USB it pops up as a USB device like a USB flash drive and you just copy your sounds on it. And so then we've got pins along the bottom, which are for different numbers. And we've got 11 pins and we've got a ground pin. And effectively the simplest mode is you ground one of the pins, so you can put a piece of wire between them or a switch, and it will play the relevant sound. Um, there's also a digital volume up and down control. And um, that's basically how it works. So it's really good for putting um, sounds into props with just simple switches where you don't need anything more complicated. It's got two mega flash on board. So you can get quite a lot of sounds on there. Um, and it plays WAV files or OG Vorbis, which um, basically OG is a compressed sound format, so you can squeeze quite a lot of sound on it. It's also got some pins that are labelled TX and RX, and that's for serial. That hasn't been implemented at the time of recording, and I think it's going to be in the future. So for now, those do nothing. Um, and let's have a look at the Adafruit website, and we can look at the full functionality. So here's the Adafruit website. This currently costs 19.95 in US dollars. And so there's uh, quite a lot of detail about it, including some various pictures and so on of the board, which you've already seen. Um, if we scroll down, um, there is a video actually that explains how it works from Adafruit. It's the new products video from earlier this year. Uh, but basically, as I explained, you just basically copy the stuff onto the two meg of storage on the board and you've got these 11 triggers. So depending on how you rename the file, you can make it uh, do a different thing. So if you rename the, or if you name the file T, so 00, zero um, and the, basically when you ground zero, the pin zero, it will play that sound. If you rena rename that file T01, um, either WAV or OG files, then the sound will trigger when you hit pin one. So you can have up to 11 sounds in the simplest mode. You can also name it, say, T00, hold L, and then basically it will play um, while that pin is held low, and if you let go of the pin, it will stop. There's various other things, including the latching loop, so it'll basically start playing when you hit the pin once, and when you hit it again, it'll stop playing. Um, you've also got the play next trigger, so you can stack multiple sounds on each pin, so you can have up to 10 files on each pin by just renaming them, so the pin number, then next, and then zero through to next nine. So you could play 110 sounds off the board by having 10 on each of the 11 pins, and then each time you hit that pin, it will play the next one in order. And there's also a random mode where you rename it RAND, um, and then it will do the same thing but play the sounds randomly. So you can't play multiple sounds at a time, although they're cheap enough you could buy multiple boards and put more than one in a project if you wanted to play multiple sounds at a time. It also can't play MP3s, and that's because it costs money to license a product that plays MP3s, and that's why they've used OG format. Um, OG format is open source, and there are lots of converters online, and I'm also about to show you the one I've used for this project. So I'm using a piece of software called Audacity to edit the sounds to put onto this. And Audacity is free and open source. It's basically literally a free download. And I've got it running just here. So I'm using 2.0.6, which is the latest version at the time of recording. And there's its GPL license, which means it's open source. So um, I've got the sound loaded in here. I've basically ripped a YouTube video of The Power of Love by Hugh, uh, Huey Lewis and the News, which was used in Back to the Future. Um, I've turned it to mono and I've trimmed the start and the end so that it start, starts straight away as soon as you start the track. So when we open the lid of Mr. Fusion, it's going to play. 
and I've trimmed a bit off the end and turning it to mono basically saved me half the space. So I've managed to get this down to under two meg to fit on the flash. Um, this is um, quite a long track, it's about three minutes. So obviously I could get quite a lot of sounds on um, and I could also do them at a lower bit rate as well. So I can literally get that, hun that hundred sounds on that board if I wanted, if they were very short clips. So for, you know, a prop weapon or something, you can have lots of shorter sounds for all of the sounds. So I can play you a little bit, but not too much, because it's copyright infringement. I think that's about all I'll get away with. So all I need to do is export that as an AUG and stick it on the board. All right, so I've linked my board there to its micro USB cable, and I'm just going to plug that into my laptop. Green lights come on, and immediately it pops up and says... Hello, I'm a USB device, so let's just open the folder. And basically, I've already copied the file on, it was 1.79 meg, and I've called it t 0 hold l.og. And that means when I ground pin zero, it's going to play while that pin is grounded, which means it'll play whilst Mr. Fusion's lid is open. Okay, so I've got several things on the table. I've got an active speaker here, which cost me 10 pounds off eBay. It's actually a Bluetooth speaker, but it also has a normal audio in jack. So you can plug in devices Ready to connect. and it speaks to you as well to tell you what's going on. So there we go. So that's got its own battery. It charges off USB. But I'm also using this, which is one of those USB boost adapters for charging your cell phone if you run out of battery. It's a two amp hour battery, um, charges from a micro USB and the output is on a normal USB. So I'm actually using that to power the board. Uh, these are all going to be built into Mr. Fusion. And the reason I've done it that way is that I can actually charge the speaker from this if the speaker goes flat and there'll still be power to power the soundboard rather than it all running off one battery. So I could hack into the speaker battery to power this. Uh, but there's plenty of space, so it's good to have the spare battery. And then if my speaker goes flat, I can boost it, charge it, plug this back in. Um, everything's on USB, so it's really easy. So I've got the uh, audio cable connected to the speaker in and I've got um, that obviously connected to the soundboard. So if I now ground pin zero, it should play the power of love while I hold it like that. So let's just got this little bit of wire, which will eventually be a switch. And um, if I hold that forever, it will play the whole track. So if I open the lid, it plays, and when I shut it, it stops. So there we go, pretty easy. And if I put more sounds on, each pin would play a different sound. Okay, so here's Mr. Fusion. Obviously the lid opens, so what we need to do is mount this speaker inside, facing upwards, so we need a kind of tray fixed across there. So that's going to be pretty easy to do. Um, basically that's going to hold the battery and all the stuff. The only slightly tricky thing is attaching the switch. So I've got this micro switch, which has got a little roller on it. So I need to somehow mount that just there, so that when the lid's shut, the roller rolls across this section and um, closes it. And when it's open, it pops open, and obviously the music plays. So we're going to do some 3D printed brackets to hold this lot. Let's have a look at some CAD. So here are the fairly simple parts which I'm going to print. Um, I've basically got um, this large outside piece, which is a bridge that goes across the gap of Mr. Fusion, and the hole in the middle is just the right size for the speaker. And I've got these two kind of cradle parts in the middle, which are going to be... Um, the tabs basically fitted into the gaps so that I can drop the speaker in there. I'll probably Velcro it in or something, and I can Velcro on the battery and glue the soundboard somewhere. The other part just at the back there, which is now at the front, is the switch holder. So again, that's a very simple shape that holds the micro switch and a tab that glues underneath the rim of Mr. Fusion. So I should be able to adjust the angle in that slot to get it just right so that it switches and unswitches when I open and close the lid. So let's get that printed off and cue some music that's almost like The Power of Love, but not quite. So here are my 3D printed parts. So uh, my speaker fits in this bracket here. 
and then we've got the two cradle parts which are going to attach on the bottom there and we can acetone weld all of this together so much like the um, rest of Mr Fusion which is uh, multiple parts stuck together we've printed this in ABS so that we can basically melt it with some acetone and we can chemically weld those parts together so that part fits okay and, and somewhere we can fit the battery on there as well and then we've got this little clip part here which is to hold the micro switch which will fit like that and then these will both fit under the rim so this fits under from the bottom of Mr Fusion and this part fits underneath the rim as well from uh, by the lid hinge basically so the switch can be switched and we can just adjust that angle to get it right so let us get those all fitted and see how well it works Okay, so here are all the parts fitted. My switch has got the block acetone welded to the ABS of Mr. Fusion, and I've put lots of hot glue on to set the angle correctly. I've got my speaker there on its cradle, and the, glue, the board glued on the end with the audio plugged in, and the battery there, and there's a Velcro strap just to hold all of that together. So all I need to do to uh, make this work is plug in the USB power. Green lights on, and turn on the speaker. The external sound mode. And what's really good is if I just unplug the audio cable, then I can connect to this speaker with Bluetooth on my phone. So if I want to use it as just a boombox at a party and play some different tracks, then I can do that as well. So next time you see me dressed as Marty McFly, ask me to open the lid.